Major Hamza Al Mustafa, you welcome to this special interview. Thank you so much. Now, to many Nigerians, the name Al Mustafa is dreaded. They look at the person as that dreaded chief security officer of late General Sani Apacha and probably the mastermind of the killing of MK Wabiola. And but for some people right now, they believe, especially people like Femi Falano. He described you as someone who is trying to rewrite history by claiming to be a friend of MK Wabiola. What's your reaction to that? First of all, I say it's most unfortunate that uh, people who never know the contents of events will be the ones that will be at the foremost in uh, occupying television, radio, and newspapers misleading the society. Falana doesn't know much of me. Falana claimed to be coming to court during the trial that started on the 14th of October 1999. But on most occasions, when trial was on, he was busy in television house telling the world what never happened, most unfortunately. But I'm happy. After my discharge, he came up with so many things, and with him as an SAN, a lawyer who was always in court, who kept the records of the court, came to one of the television houses to reply him. I haven't said anything till this moment. <clears throat> and for him to say, I do not know Chief M.K. Abiola, he saw rest in peace, then suddenly uh, Chief Falana is misleading this country, or probably he doesn't know. If he doesn't, all those who were close to him knows very well. My relationship with Chief M.K. Abiola started from early 80s, 84 to be precise. He was coming to Army headquarters, and I was in Army headquarters. And most of the occasions he was coming, I was the one paving way for him to come to Army headquarters, naval headquarters, air headquarters, at the Independence Building that time. There were occasions that I can say that was open. When there was a launching for Borno State, Abdul Mumin Amin was governor at that time. It was at the National Art Theater. Let Chief M.K. Abiola was a chief launcher. He didn't use his pen. He said, let me borrow your pen to write this check of 11 million naira of that time to the state. That was a very huge money then. And he used my pen in writing. And all I said is, what will be the commission to the pen? So everybody laughed. He said, writing it for you, it means that you will get 11 million naira one day. <laughs> I will all laugh over it. Similar thing happened when this national stadium was being launched. General Bacha was representative of General Babangida. And General uh, Let Chief M.K. Abiola was the chief launcher. He also gave illness, the same 11 million naira, if you can go back to television, to go back to the news. It was my pen he still used in writing. This tells you the closeness. If I don't know much of him, there wouldn't be anything like this. And it was in camera, in the news, openly. So for him to, uh, you know, come to the television, uh, dance to the gallery, because you want to be seen, to be talking, uh, is most unfortunate. You see, in this country, Lies will not take us nowhere. The truth will, sure. It may be bitter, but it is. You can't sit down in one part of Nigeria and be assuming issues to be this way or that way. And you take steps forward. I but know, I know, I know. When General Abacha was around, you talked about uh, killings. I know when General Abacha was around, many people who wanted to oust Abacha had me as an enemy. And to me, I took an oath to defend that place. I'm the last human being that will take an oath and compromise. It can never, ever happen. I will never, ever betray. I will never compromise an oath. So the issue of the well-being and welfare of people, I know much more. When well, Chief M.K. Abiola was in police detention, I forced myself into helping him. He was in the custody of police. He was in Gashua before. But thank God he was brought back to Abuja. We'll get back to that. Yeah, sure. Somebody has mm. joined mm. Femi Falano, mm. and in fact, two of them, mm. Ayo Paduku mm. and Femi Falano, have called mm. you a pathological liar. The two of them, most unfortunately, are people who are compromised. And watch my word, highly compromised. Pa Opadokun uh, is most unfortunate. He's talking this way. During Nadeko, they were fighting. They were abusing the then government or the then person of the late General Sani Abacha. And there is no propaganda, no messages they put. If God Almighty were to judge the contents of what they said, they have no proof. They don't know what to say. Propaganda is not what we require in Nigeria. The truth. 
They don't know much of what we were doing. I took late Chief MK Wabiola as a father. And I was spending. Those who were supposed to take care of him were not paying. They didn't care. I had to scavenge for money to arrange for his feeding. The commissioner of police in Abuja at that time, as it was narrated at the Putapana, knew that I used to give him 850,000 naira of that time to feed him on what he wanted because he was in their custody. Later on, he was moved to the residence of uh, the guest house of the secretary of the government and I secured it for his comfort. I gave him, I gave him Chief, M Chief M.K. Wabiola a Bible and a Quran and plain sheets of paper. You know what he was doing with them? He was writing his diary. Every person that comes to him, everything that had happened to him was kept. And I'm indeed very, very worried. Ask me why. After they killed him, I'm asking for the whereabouts of that Bible, the Quran, and those jotings he did. Nigerians need to know what he jotted. Who took them? Why are they hidden? Why are they kept? Why wouldn't those fighting for him ask for them? I asked for it and I became an enemy because I want the world to know. He kept there are a lot of stories, a lot of things he jotted down for Nigerians to, to speak. Did you see them? Did you read them? Who? What? MK1? I gave him to keep his, 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 his personal issues. Okay. Every person that visited, every issue that had happened, he jotted them down. And we were talking together. All I was doing was to ask him to accept conditional bail. Go home. From home, you can now come back from the point of strength. And that's what we were doing. I used to take him out on the streets illegally. I take him in the car. We go around Abuja just to convince him. It was illegal. I was not supposed to do so, but I do. Or oh, I did. So many people are saying <coughs> you, you claim to love Abiola so much, but uh, Femi Falamo also mm. claimed mm. that uh, Dr. Falamo, mm. uh, Abiola's doctor, mm. you stopped him from seeing him. You got him arrested. And he also said that uh, there was a time Abiola fell from his bathroom and had a swollen feet. Mm. You refused Abiola from having medical attention. All right, number one. I know Ore Falomo very well, and I trusted him. I still do. Ore Falomo's hospital in 1989, I was a patient. So if I can entrust my life as a patient to him in 1989, that's one issue. He was led chief MQ Abiola's doctor, as well as me, in Maryland Specialist Hospital. Dr. Ore Falomo saying I denied him access. It wasn't me that had the authority then. It was the police. And one of the reasons why I pushed myself into having him close to where we can now have access for him was to allow the family. And there was never a time the family came and I was told and I didn't rush to organize. The fact that I never come back to tell him that I was the facilitator is another thing. I don't like pressing it myself. And I did. He visited him many times and all the visitations are on videotape. I never, never denied any person. And I never denied him uh, refusal to go to hospital. That is also another fundamental mistake. If he fell from his bathroom at that time in their custody, the chief physician to the president, Dr. Wali, was there. And I was the one that insist chief physician should be seeing him. The same chief physician who was treating the president at that time. If he is considered to be the best, then let that be. And besides, during Babankita's administration, the chief physician was known to let Chief MK Abiola, so they knew themselves. So it was better to have somebody who knew him very well many years past. And this I did. The fact that they do not know, it does not mean they should go on speculating on what they want, not facts. You know, lies, distorts, lies, lies brings about hatred and disaffection. And that's not what we want. Learned and elder people should be seen to speak from the point of view of honesty and sincerity. With the love of the same person, let Chief MK Wabiola, uh, if Chief, let Chief MK Wabiola survived, I wouldn't have gone to jail. He would have been one of my witnesses. And I know that wouldn't have happened. We should be looking at the larger issues. The question is, why should Chief MK Wabiola be killed? And why should they be angry because I'm asking these questions? They should support me to uncover that first. Why? And they know the people. I, they shared money. Those who killed him shared money. I don't share money. So they, defend, they are defending those who killed him. And they are attacking me because I have no money to share. 
Now, when you say they share <coughs> money, we would like to know more about that sharing of money. Who I said took it, money? I said it in the year 2001 at Aputapana. Until this very moment, nobody challenged me. Until these few things that uh, are coming up lately. In the year 2001, maybe people have forgotten. I know it's a long time now. I said it at Aputapana. I tendered the tape. I tendered the document. The document that led to the withdrawal of money from Central Bank and the fictitious reasons given for the withdrawal of that money. That money was not meant for what it was written. Let Chief M.K. Abiola was killed on the 8th of July. On the 9th, a letter was already taken to Central Bank, given directives to the governor of Central Bank that time, to release funds as stated. How signed, much? Signed by the president. Hundreds of millions of dollars. It's in that document. It's a public document. The Oputa panel has it. In the court, I tendered it. And I have my reasons for tendering it. Just to avoid people who will sit down and support those who came destroying this country. And that's why I tendered them. So that the documents and the evidence of video tapes can speak for me. So even without where did this anything. money go to? Shared to people. Which people? The people that came uh, fighting for Lechip and Pio Abiola. Let Do me give, tell you what happened to give for you to know an example. Opa Dokun, who is busy abusing me right now who claimed he never been to Abuja on the 9th in the morning. An aircraft, presidential aircraft, was sent to pick him to the villa. And that is the same time this money was brought from Central Bank. And one may ask, where were you at that time because General Bacha had died and you were supposed to have left the villa? I was still in the villa handing over. I left the villa on the 31st of July, that same year. So on the 8th, I was very much around. I had not finished handing over the villa because there were about three offices for me to hand over to the then new head of state. The office of CGS, there was nobody, and then there were custody of many things. The office of NSA, there were some other things that we had to introduce to the president, to the head of state then. At that material time, they came. They came furious, coming to fight government over the murder of uh, Let's Chief MQ Wabiola. That was what brought them. And thank God, if you watch the tape, there were nasty comments they make as they, for their readiness to sacrifice all they had for and on behalf of Yoruba nation for the matter of Chief MQ Wabiola. You could see the bitterness. They went in. <coughs> Soon after they came out, and that's why I videotaped it. The comments, the attitude, the mood changed. They were clapping hands and chatting and chatting and, and yelling or within themselves. And then I thank God one of the correspondents in the presidency. There were many correspondents who were colleagues at that time, if you can check back the history. Even local news covered it. But I covered my own de de uh, de de deliberately and differently for many reasons. Because I wanted to keep the data right. Because things were not going right at that time. And what did they say when they were asked? The same Opadoko. The matter of MK Abiola is gone. We are going to forge ahead. That is no longer an issue. This man was killed a few hours ago. This is the man you claim to be fighting in Nadeko. This is the man you claim to be a mentor. This is the last Ore Una can come for. And you just go on a, some few minutes meeting and came out and say it's a forgone issue. That is not the matter at the moment. That it is no longer an issue. That you are going to forge ahead. How? How can this happen? What sense does this make? And now, because I'm talking of the same man, now I'm an enemy. This is what I'm talking about. If I hadn't any video collection, if I don't have the documents that brought about the money from Central Bank, you may can, you can call me names, but so, I have them. So you have video of all this? I have video of that visit. Do you have video evidence of them giving these people money? Inside the villa? Yes. Houses, they even went to Lagos, house to house, and money was shared. I refer you to 2001 and 2002, Ghanaian Adams interview. And I ask you one fundamental question. If let Chimakio Abiola's burial was to take place, who do you think should be at the forefront to participate? Was Padokun there? Did he participate in the burial? Since Abiola died, did he take one naira out of the dollars he collected to give to any of the orphans of let Chimakio Abiola? Did he give one naira to any of the widows? Is he regular in visiting the grave of Let Chief MQ Abiola? What welfare package has he for Let Chief MQ Abiola? At what intermittent breaks has he ever spoken as a vanguard for some monuments to be named after Let Chief MQ Abiola at the forefront? But why should you be at the forefront the moment we talk about the man? I know what triggered him when I say tape. 
He was scared I was going to talk about this step. That's why I said to him, by his age, I was not ready to join issues with him. But since he brought it and was even talking on radio, I said, okay, let me bring him back to the path. Maybe he didn't know I tendered this step in Lagos High Court. It's a public document. It's a Lagos High Court. Okay, so it's in the Lagos <coughs> High Court. It's before the Court of Justice, Mojishola Dada. I tendered it, and they were shocked. One of the lawyers was trying to convince me to say that I shouldn't say that this step was taken in the villa. But it's clear. They themselves, those who visited the villa themselves, knew they were in the presidency or the presidency co uh, correspondence. That's why the correspondence may not picture themselves in a tape for themselves. They will only picture the guest. My own tape pictured the guest and the correspondence of the villa with the background of the office of the president, with the seal of the court of arms. It has a meaning. He doesn't understand. I turned at it. Do you have <coughs> video evidence of those who offered this money? That's another big matter, and I will tell you at a later date. You cannot release all my ammo right now. I don't talk because I like to talk. I don't talk because I want to go uh, into rhetorics. That is not good for a nation. That is not good for people. If I tell you an issue, definitely in any court of law I will defend it. Now Femi Falano claims mm. that you told your putter panel that mm. these tips mm. uh, was stolen by, were stolen by General Abdul Salam Abu Bakr. This is what happened. And this is what brought the confusion that they are attacking me right now. When Abiola was killed, they now looked for an officer called Mr. Zado that I attached to Lech Mempio Abiola and took him away into detention for one year from Abuja to Lagos so that the boy will keep his mouth shut, will not talk. He had no access to nobody so that he could talk because he refused to compromise. He's a born again. And I know why I attach him to him. I attach him as a liaison. But soon after the death of General Bacha, I was kept away from staying with Lech Chief MP Abiola. Abdul Salam Abakar refused me access to him. And even the day they were to take him to Aguda House for that interview, Lech Chief MP Abiola said he was not going to go until I come. And thank God the boy testified and said that at a put upon him. And it was the same Falana that cross examined the same Zadok. He was the same Falana that cross examined me in 2001. So how can he be changing his mouth? And then, when Zadok, who escorted late Chief M.K. Abiola, was there, Zadok was called to leave Chief M.K. Abiola alone in the parlor of a good house where this man was killed. The tea that he was administered to, that I was asked by Falana in the year 2001, around August or so, at a putapana, was a, a, a big issue. It was that same tea that was administered to him, and after he took it, what happened? So all the details of what happened leading to Lechi Vemkyo Abiola falling on his face on the floor, and abandoned, and nobody was helping him. And all they did was, we sit and wait for a doctor, when this man was gasping for air. Who helped him? You heard the narrations of Zadok at Oputapana. Rather than the doctor or the emergency doctors or the doctors on call at the villa who are there, instead they sat waiting for a doctor to come. Up until somebody said, okay, now go to hospital. Then they left. I refer you to the narration of Zadok. That speaks for itself. But then, what brought about me being framed? First, for coup so that they could now have the access of searching everything I had, was to now discover this video camera that they later got to know exists in the parlor in Aguda House, where this event took place, meaning it's captured on video. Every single thing I had was searched and taken away. That was the genesis. Falana, as a human rights lawyer, as a Yoruba man, as an SAN, as a minister in the Temple of Justice, should help me to pressurize them to produce all they took from me. This country needs them. The question is, why were they busy looking for video tapes, audio tapes, and documents? Why should that be an issue? And I was framed. But for the 15 years I was taken away, I was never allowed to talk to the media. 
even Oporta Panel was because they convinced the Obasanjo government at that time that I was disarmed of all exhibits. So if they bring me, with the torture I went through, my spirit had dumped down, there was no way I could talk or defend myself with anything. That was why we were brought, nothing more. Towards the end of December, Oporta Panel, when they realized God has kept our memory intact of our issues, there were the same people who were now begging that we shouldn't even be testifying. I was threatened not to say, not to talk from prison. Paul and I should be seen to be a defender of the rights of man. As a lawyer, and as he claimed to be. Not abusing me arbitrarily on things he cannot testify, or because I decided to keep short. I thank God his fellow colleagues, lawyers, now, haven't seen, haven't attended or put upon him, haven't known what has happened. His colleagues, even here saying, are ready and about to talk to him on television, the way he's doing. Okay. Uh, Falano, yeah. going mm. back to still Falano, right. he, he said when the Pope, mm. the Pope John Paul yes. visited, mm. he had a meeting with General Sani Abacha and mm. was trying to convince General Sani Abacha mm. where, that he should release Abiola mm. and Abacha was almost convinced. Mm. You were watching somewhere else mm. with the CCTV mm. and immediately you saw that Abacha was almost convinced. You mm. just budged into the room and mm. just said, Ogasa, Nyakai, it's over. Please stop. You know, when I hear things like that, it baffles me a lot. When you sit down and imagine issues and now come to television to tell the world because they're listening to you, it's extremely disturbing and disheartening for a lawyer who should be very honest. First of all, the character of General Sane Abacha that they portrayed. That was not the Abacha they thought he was. If that was the character of General Sani Abacha, Lech Chimbenke Obiela wouldn't have been his tight, intimate friend. And the personalities across this country wouldn't have been his friend. And Falana is making a mistake. General Abacha served as brigade commander in Ikeja. He has many, many Yoruba friends, including traditional rulers. He served as GOC in Ibadan. He served as chief of army staff, all in Lagos. He served as chief of defense staff, all in Lagos. In the entire six states of the Yoruba land, there is no part of any of these states that don't visit General Bacha. And there were so many intimate issues between him and them. And so for Falana to come to television talking, many of them are just keeping quiet and watching him. Take it from me. But he assumed to belittle the man. The question is, who is paying Falana to be doing this? It's extremely belittling and disheartening for him to come to mimic the nature of the man General Bacha. He doesn't know him. From the way he's talking, uh, General Bacha, if a meeting is going on with such a visitor like Pope, nobody can pop in to just talk. It can never, it, it had never happened. Besides, what they were talking were numerous issues. General Bacha, in a meeting in a good house, prior to the visit of late Chief Pope, the, the late Pope, Paul, John Paul. There were agreements with so many. Even before the conditional bail or no conditional bail, the issue came. General Bacha insists, let Abiola can go so that there will be peace, meaning taking the conditional bail. But in the same video of those visiting him, including Falana himself, who was visiting the Lecce Banki Abiola as a lawyer, he should understand all the things he told Abiola are on video. And this video, for the first time I'll tell you this, is in the hands of SSS, NIA, DMI, Presidency, and me, Mustafa. So the issue of lies telling to the country, most all these agencies are just looking at him, making him full of himself. You cannot sit down and assume because the television gives you the latitude to come to talk. And you just come to talk, to deceive the country, to create disaffection, to tell lies that never exist is wrong. We should speak the truth. Truth may be bitter sometimes, but we should say it. Did you see when Abiola was killed? Or when he died? I told you of a tape, correct? Yeah. I was kept away from being there. So you weren't there? You were, they, say, they say you claimed you were in Inugu. You see? That is what Falana will tell you. Falana... I will now refer you back to what I said before. Let Chief Amkyo Abiola was killed at Aguda House on the 8th of July. 
money was shared, was drawn from central bank on the 9th. The document itself that withdrew the money was dated 9th, and money was brought promptly in dollars and pounds and naira deliberately and excuses were given as being the reasons behind the withdrawal directly from central bank and it was delivered in an emergency state to the villa mustafa was still handing over the same presidency till 31st of july and the records are there i moved to inugu in august so all these events happen in my presence the only thing here is that I was denied access to late Chief M.K. Wabiola. And the question is why? Even when late Chief M.K. Wabiola was asking, I should be around to know where they were taking him to. If he had not trusted me, why was he bothered? Zadok is a pastor, he's a born again. And I refer to the same fellow to what happened in 2001. If Nigerians have forgotten, let that be. No wonder today they told me in uh, the website within Nigeria, most of these videotapes have been removed. And I hope he's not part of those big men who are removing most of these things that are there to keep this country abreast of what happened yesterday. You keep saying they framed you, they framed you. Of who course. are these people who are framing you? Now, first of all, we handed over government to somebody. And soon after I left for Inugu, in fact, on my way to Inugu, I was to be killed. So that meant most of the silent details were not to be. That's another issue entirely. That is much more bigger than what you think. I'm coming to that later. Not, uh, I don't think this forum is enough to take it. <laughs> I was framed five, six times. The first, on the 1st of October, 1998, I was arrested for staging a coup from Inugu. I left the villa. I handed over power to someone in the villa. I left to Inugu with only staff officers from military intelligence section. I wasn't the GOC. I was not a brigade commander. I was not a battalion commander with troops to fight. I was in the intelligence wing as the second in command for that division, but from the intelligence section of it. Yet I was framed for staging a coup. I was arrested for coup. Now when I was taken, the panel members now began to doubt why I was arrested for coup. Where were the ingredients of the coup? Who was I staging the coup with? Second, I was arrested because that failed. Now they said, no, I was arrested because the late Gaddafi's government was sending artillery and tanks to me with which to stage a fight, a coup against the government of Islam al -Bakr. How was that feasible? I was arrested and taken to warehouses in Yobe where people were keeping granotes in the ancient days. They saw nothing. The same officers and soldiers were telling me things. I was taken in chains, badly, badly humiliated. And I was brought back. Now the second, when that fell, they said no. I was in custody of General Butcher's properties. I was tortured badly. Any good house they see around Abuja at that time, they will come and take the picture and say, the social street, there is this house. Is it a butcher's own? If I say no, I will be subjected to torture, beating, and burning on my body with nylon bag. Nylon, they will lit it and be dropping the blue flame on me. So I began to accept anything they bring. Is that a butcher's own? Yes, it's his own. Is this your own? Yes, it's my own. Okay. I had little respite for that. I was also blamed for taking for being in possession of butcher's money. That they needed the billions of uh, naira and dollar that a butcher had. If you know my character, and that's why I can stand boldly to look at any person and to tell him whatever is in my mind sincerely, is the fact that there is no single naira I have taken that is someone's own. We handed over Villa to the last dust that was hooved in the room of the president. And I am proud of that. I can say this here before you. I can say it before this country. I can say it before my creator. So nobody can say that we were in government and we took money. Let them challenge me, and that's all I want. And that's why I made a statement to Abdul Salam Abakar. I made a similar statement to President Obasanjo when they came asking me questions. Particularly, when even when I was in Kirikiri, I was framed for staging a coup. And well, I wonder what they I'm coming. I wonder their understanding of coup is all about. Because you have tried one way to destroy me, and it couldn't work. Now, if you are trying to create another scenario, to destroy me, 
why not create a scenario that is closer to reality? But some of the lies, some of the framing they did, even cartoons can take it, sincerely, cartoons. Because you cannot keep me in prison and said I was staging a coup. 29th of March, 20, 2004. They said I was staging a coup. Okay, with who? Against who? They said I was to buy a Stinger missile and then fire uh, a President of Basanjo's helicopter in Kirikiri. What is a Stinger missile? How many people fire Stinger missile? Where is it sold? How can you acquire it? How is it controlled around the world? How much is it? Who are these remaining four people to fire it with me inside Kirikiri? How will I know when Obasanjo is in a helicopter or flying Kirikiri? <laughs> airport was, was so many miles far, far, far away from airport. And direction of water, where Obasanjo, after he lands with his helicopter to go to, was further away, more to Kirikiri, far, far away, uh, hundreds of miles away from the same Kirikiri. Okay, at what time did he come to Kirikiri for me to fire? But this was in front pages, and I was arrested for it. Okay, I ask you today, in the arsenal, in our holdings, Stinger missile is not an, it's a soft skin missile, meaning in an environment where the temperature is high like ours who are closer to equator, such weapons are dangerous for the custodian to keep. If a piece is bought, and a piece is, like they told me lies, because when I went to court I asked them, what is a piece? They say one single piece, no. A piece is 101. That is a piece, and that is how it is sold to countries that wishes to use it, approved by Security Council, UN. It's not moved anyhow. Because once one is missing, the airspace of that country will be declared unsafe to the entire aviation world. These are things they don't know. So they didn't do their homework when they were doing lies. And the same international community were watching. The question is, who asked you to buy and to keep, and who told you you have? We have domains for training in Egypt and in South Africa, because their weather is partially... Uh, uh, friendly, meaning cooler than ours. Mm. So they have domains for training. But to say we have it, where is it? Why not even use some of the weapons that have been used in Nigeria to now concoct the lies? But then I was taken to a panel and there were interviews for many days. I was in chains all through. But what of Basanjo and what the person that framed me, whom we handed over about to, who was desperate to make sure I was killed. All these generals came to beg me. All. They, ex they washed their hands out of it. It's a game that some people are cooking, but count us out of it. But at the surface, they had to defend themselves. Even let Azazi, the last October in his life, he sent an apology to me. Because we started working when he was a captain, and I was a lieutenant, second lieutenant then. In the same office, 1983. Okay. Wait, I haven't finished. Okay. Because this is, these are fundamental games they are hiding under to be misleading this country by telling lies. We shouldn't. Around the time General Agwe was appointed Chief of Army Staff, a common friend, General Agwe, my senior, a common friend came to the prison, was allowed to visit me, Kirikiri, that time, 2004. He said, ah, General Agwe is now appointed Chief of Army Staff. He said, yeah, yeah, you see, we're in darkness. No paper, no radio. Here, we, they clamped on us so much. Oh, I said, let me talk to the authority if they can allow. And they did. They gave me plain sheets of paper. I quickly jotted down a letter of congratulatory, congratulatory letter to the then chief of army staff, <coughs> General Agwe. What was in the letter? Because we had the discussions long ago when he was a left hand corner. And he was talking about subordination of the military to democracy by ensuring professionalism of our services so that the brilliance and the capacity of a typical Nigerian soldier will now be brought to the limelight for the world to see. This was a discussion years past in the 80s. I reminded him that in the letter. And I asked him, I said, time has come for you to subordinate the military, reorientation, training, and realism in training, so that our democracy will be deeply rooted. In the letter I wrote to him, four page, and I signed, if I was an enemy of the same Obasanjo, if I was an enemy of democracy, as he said, would I have written that from detention, where I was being suffered and being framed? I did. No sooner General Agwe got this letter, somebody rushed to the government then, and rushed to the government. So these same people persecuting me, and said, Mustafa is busy conniving with the military to stage a coup. 
and the passenger believed it. That's why in the same panel where I was called, the same General Agwe was called to testify. When they saw the letter, then they kept short. Why not give me the credit till tomorrow that, that aspect is short and they don't want anybody to know. That's why the content of the investigation is also hidden. That's why they took me to a court of law, trying me for coup. And even in the coup, no proof of evidence, no what is called yeah, a proof of evidence that is supplied for a court matter to try. A matter was sent without proof of evidence, without list of witnesses. And Justice Dan Abutu, who was second in command, who at that time was almost at the verge of his trial, at one point when he was forced to try us in his own way that even military courts cannot accept, he said, all my life, I have never seen where a judge is muzzled this much, all to ensure the conviction of people out of frustration. But why are all these things not out? Because Mustafa is involved. And because those scared of what they did, the, the skeletons in their cupboard, the tales of the unexpected of this, of this country, is so much on their side. I can never compromise facts. They can hate me. They can continue to sponsor propaganda. I am the way I was. I won't change. Okay. You say you were framed. Yes. Were you also framed for the murder of Kudirat? Absolutely correct. Let uh, Chief Falana will come to the court as alleged in papers. But he won't come. Rather, he will go to radio houses and television. He didn't know what the trial was all about. And thank God Almighty, the entire documents, the entire proceedings are there for the whole world to see. A book is already put together. We are waiting for the last hearing in the uh, Supreme Court, the last appeal, to form the last chapter of three volumes already. Documents of the same Lagos High Court, Court of Appeal and Supreme Court for the world to see. Because you, they went on one hand to induce these boys, gave them money, taught them what to say, rehearsed and told them what to say. Including Sergeant Rogers. Sergeant Rogers was even the foremost. They bought a house for him in Elorin. They gave him cars intermittently. They induced him and connived and taught him what to say. And he confessed and said everything in the court of law. Where was Falana? Where they confessed as to was pointing at the prosecution. Madam, you are the one that was teaching me. You and Oga so, so, so. That particular Oga for politics, I don't want to mention. But thank God Almighty, the court of this country has captured that. And I refer you to the rulings of the court of appeal. Go and read it. Go and see what they said. If you read it, I refer you to, and I refer the general public to that. If they read the ruling, they will be able to see exactly what is in the matter. The ruling of Justice Dada, who said at the end of the day, her last sentence was before pronouncing conviction of me. Even though in this matter, and I'm quoting, even though in this matter there is no substantial evidence to allow for conviction, I, however, pronounce you guilty. Have you ever heard such a thing? Who was telling her to do that? In that her trial, she sat for 7 hours 20 minutes, reading a judgment. But in the entire trial, she skipped everything I said. She skipped my testimony in a court. And then she pronounced judgment on me. Have you ever had such a thing? The general public didn't know what I said, how I said, what I said. The exhibits I tendered, some of which I'm referring you to. She didn't. And Falana was there, and they didn't correct her. When there is fanfare, Falana will come to court. When there is nothing, they will run to the they will run to television house abusing us. They will sponsor people to abuse us. The hatred of late Chief, Chief Abacha was what I carried over. But to me, if that is price of loyalty, let that be. But for me to compromise and for me to be weak and for me to be affected because I have displayed loyalty, even for the common purpose that we have our juniors in the military who are toiling and serving this country, we should keep abreast and up on our hill to keep their spirit in fighting for Nigeria. Because they do not know the effect of blackmailing, framing a serving officer. All through the 17 years, I was a serving officer. Till this moment, many people are making a mistake. Up until Supreme Court determines, up until Army Council sits, I'm a serving officer. Now, many people will be asking, mm -hmm. why is Al Mustafa talking this time? Why did you choose this time to speak? I have been talking, but they will never announce it. I have been. Maybe you don't know. And I have gone around this country on the invitation of our elders. 
the 36 states of this country I go to, I go to free. If I'm guilty, I can go. But there's no way I will not go. Any day, any time, I will drive myself to the place. Do you have a political ambition? I don't have. But I'm supporting people who are, whom I believe have the qualities to deliver this country. People who are honest, who are patriotic, who are ready to serve, who will guard our younger ones aright so that they can come to the fore, so that they will be taken away from the shackles of some people who have attained positions in high status, lofty towers, but telling lies, deceiving this country, stealing their money, and foolishly handing over Nigeria on a wrong direction. Thank you very much, Major Hamza Al-Mustafa, for so much. talking with us. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Thank you.